So, Zhenghua Primary School warmly welcomes all parents of 2022 Primary 1 students to our P1 orientation. And because I can see quite a number of children as well, uh, a very warm welcome to our incoming P1 students. Now, in a normal year, you will be in school and I will see you face to face. But because of COVID-19, you are safely at home and I'm speaking to you. Now, transition from kindergarten to primary school is a very big step. And I just want to ask how many parents, um, how many of you have children going to P1 for the very first time? You can, I, I don't know, um, they may not be reaction buttons, but you can just raise your hand, okay? You know, how many parents have children going to P1 for the very first time? Raise hands. Ah, okay. So I can imagine what it's like. I'm a mother myself with two children. They went through P1. And so I understand how you feel. Uh, so they are quite... It's about 30 odd parents, 34, okay? Now, different children are at different levels of school readiness and um, all your children will have adjustment issues. So I want to start with a story, a true story about a P1 student who first went to you know, P1 quite a number of years ago. So there was this, this little boy who went to school uh, P1, and then he would come home and tell his mother. So this is a true story. And this is something that you may feel. Okay, children, I'm so tired. I'm so hungry because you have to wake up so much earlier. All right. So this little boy used to go to kindergarten for three hours in the afternoon. But now he had to wake up very early and go to school before seven o'clock, take the school bus. And then the, 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 the school day is so much longer. And when he came home, he felt hungry. He felt tired. And different children are at different levels of school readiness. So he could read, but he couldn't read very well. And so his form teacher called the mother one day and said, your son can't write sentences. Uh, but don't worry, okay, because actually we don't expect your children to be able to write sentences initially at the start of uh, P1s. But in this boys' school, they had higher expectations. And the poor boy felt anxious. And then he came home and he told his mom, sometime in term two, you know, mommy, I feel a bit, a bit dumb, right? And then during the mid-year meet the parent session, the teacher told the parent that actually, you know, he put a lot of his homework, and stuffed it under the table. He didn't bring home because he didn't know how to do it. And so, so there were all these issues. Sometimes your child may feel like that, but he began to put more effort. He wanted to read better, he began to read more, started with reading comics and then began to read more. And then in, in semester two, it, he began to learn, to grow, to improve. And then for his show and tell, he talked about wanting to be an in inventor when he grew up and he did well for show and tell. He began to learn his mathematics better. And so at the end of the year, he made so much more progress, right? Then later on in P3, when there were CCAs, he liked running, so he chose, chose athletics. But he found that he wasn't as fast as his friends. He didn't feel so good about himself. But... He persevered. Yeah, thinking how to raise hands. Join. Can, can someone please um, mute yourself? Okay. So during the sports day, he would take part in sports day. Initially, he couldn't get to the finals. Um, I think someone needs to mute yourself, okay? And then he persevered. In P4, he, um, in P5, he got into the finals. In P6, he finally won a medal, right? Then he did okay at PSLE, went to secondary school. And secondary school was tough. And then there were adjustments all over again, but he persevered. He joined two CCAs, uh, took on leadership positions, and he began to blossom in secondary school. Eventually, he became the deputy head prefect of the school. 
And then for O levels, he had seven A1s and one A2. He's now in JC1. And this boy is my son. All right. So what I want to share is sometimes you may struggle. P1 may be a difficult year. Sometimes you may not feel very successful. But if you keep putting in effort and as a parent, you know, to give that support to the child. Because my husband and I were there to constantly encourage my son so that he could actually feel that he is loved unconditionally. Even if he feels that he's not very good at things, his parents are there to support him and believe in him. And so, you see, as a parent, we need to take a long-term view of things. So sometimes children take time to adjust in P1, but you know, you take a long-term view. So I'm looking at my son's development over more than 10 years. And children, especially boys, may develop at a slower pace. But eventually, they will find themselves and they will become much more self-motivated. And when they do that, they will blossom. So wherever they are, it's very important. Parents, your unconditional love and support for them even though they may uh, struggle, they may not feel so good about themselves, but you are their world. Who you are to them is very important. And in our school, we also believe in this unconditional love for our students. And I'll share more about this later. Okay. So um, our primary school was established in 1989, Zhonghua Primary School, but actually its roots go back much earlier to 1941, to Tsinghua School. And our year head, Mrs. Lee, was an old girl at Tsinghua School, and she loves our school so much. She took her wedding photos at our school. She married her old childhood sweetheart from Tsinghua School, and she came back and as, a, as a beginning teacher and stayed all these years. You know, taught for many, many years in our school because she loves our school. All right? And... So over the years, what is distinctive and enduring about our school? First is our caring culture. We give our students a very warm welcome. We care for our students and care is one of our school values. Next, the excellent teamwork of our caring and committed staff. So our, our staff work very well together. They are very dedicated and they will go the extra mile for our students. Today, we had our last day of school and I saw P6 students crying because they are so sad to leave our school. I saw teachers crying, P6 teachers, they were so emotional when they were talking to the class. That's the care. Uh, you looked at, you saw our videos just now. We have a very vibrant learning environment with opportunities for students to develop their interests and talents. And we will share more with you on the first day of school, on the 4th of January, uh, about our very holistic uh, curriculum. Now, over the years, since our school was started, especially from 2000 onwards, so for 21 years, our school has developed strengths in the creative arts. We are very well known in Singapore by the, and recognized by the Ministry of Education uh, for our strengths in the creative arts. Very often, our students are invited to perform. You can see there's a photo of them performing at Istana, performing at public spaces. Uh, and our students' artworks are exhibited at the Singapore Youth Festival exhibition. So our school, vision, mission, and values. So our vision, which is our deepest hope and desire, our wish for our students, is that they will grow to be leaders of character, critical and creative thinkers, lifelong learners. Our mission is to nurture the whole child in a caring, innovative, collaborative, and vibrant learning environment. This is what we exist to do. And I think you can see this in the video and in the photos. Our values, our rice values, Resilience, innovation, integrity, care, collaboration, and excellence. And our motto, so parents, some of you may be old boys, old girls of our school. This motto has not changed for 32 years. It's to be the best that we can be. 
That's why excellence is one of our school values. We want to bring out the best in our students in whatever they are good at. So our focus is really to empower our students, not just to do well in exams, but to learn for life and to thrive in the 21st century. Our commitment to you is to nurture the whole child, to prepare our students for life and lifelong learning. Our beliefs, so we love, value, and accept our students for who they are. Not because they do well in their results, sometimes even when their behavior is not good and we are very sad, we may be disappointed, but we still love them. We still care for them. We still want to help them to grow and to change and to learn. We believe that every child is special and talented in his or her own way. And we want to bring out the best in each of our students. And that's why today for Affirmation Day, we gave a whole range of awards to celebrate our children's strengths, not just in the academic area, but also in sports, in the creative arts, in science, technology, mathematics, in the, in the literary arts, character, leadership. All right. So we affirm our children because they are different, but they are good in their own way. And we believe in a growth mindset. We believe that with effort, our students can learn and are capable of achieving their personal best. So our value proposition is this. When you send your child to our school, we believe that we are preparing our students for life and lifelong learning. And we put the child at the center of the distinctive Zhonghua learning experience. So what your child will experience is this. We want to mold your child to be a good leader of character and a good citizen. We want to develop your child in the creative arts to be someone who is a critical and creative thinker. We want your child to experience the joy of learning, to be a self-directed lifelong learner. And we want to develop 21st century competencies. Your child to be a confident communicator, someone who can use uh, information technology well, who can collaborate with others, who can think critically, who can be inventive, who has the ability to relate to people of different cultures. Next, we want to talk about school parent partnership and how we can work together to support your child. As you know, it takes a village to raise a child. And our school parent partnership philosophy is that parents are our partners in education and a meaningful collaboration with you, our parents, supports our students' holistic development. We really have to do it together. We can't do it alone as a school. And so we value your partnership. We welcome your constructive feedback and we want to address any concerns that you have. So next year, once your child starts his or her education, do not hesitate to contact your child's teacher if you have concerns or queries about his or her well-being and progress. Or you can contact the school office or school leaders regarding school matters. And we have a vibrant parent support group. So please support us as, your, as, as our parent volunteers. We welcome you into the Zhenghua family. We hope that next year, as the COVID situation gets better, our parents can come back and be part of the life of the school again. This year, our parents have contributed in many ways, but a lot of it was online because uh, there were times when uh, volunteers were not allowed into our school. But we hope that one day you can all come in and be part of the activities that we run for our students. So our commitment to P1 parents is this, we want to ease our P1 students into primary school. So we know that there is adjustment. We will try and make the, the transition as seamless as possible. We have an MOE kindergarten. Our teachers uh, have visited the MOE kindergarten, the kindergarten, uh, Teachers have shared with our P1 teachers what it is like, what the, the kindergarten students have experienced. So we want to make the transition as seamless as possible. But at the same time, it's going to be different. So we want to ease them in and help them to adjust. Um, and we 
really are committed to giving your child a holistic uh, uh, curriculum that is engaging, child-centered and values driven. Your teachers will be, your children's teachers will be providing regular updates on your child's progress. We promise you that we will manage homework and there is a homework policy in our school. And actually in P1, most of the children will be able to complete their work in school. They won't usually have to bring um, much homework home. And if they do, it probably will only take half an hour at most one hour. All right. And we do not do any ability bending for class placement P1 and 2. It is mixed ability. All right. Um, and as you know, for the last three years, there are no weighted assessments in P1 and 2. So no marks at all. But there are learning outcomes uh, and, uh, you know, different levels of progress whether your child is developing or competent uh, in, in the different learning outcomes and the learning dispositions. And I want to emphasize our school does not expect parents to provide tuition. If your child needs more support for learning, our teachers will be the ones who will be helping your child. We have a learning support program uh, at, for, for English and mathematics in primary one and two, and these are during curriculum time. And in P2 onwards, there will be uh, the beginning of remedial sessions. And then from P3 onwards, there, there will be a lot more learning support for your children. All right. So um, if your child needs help, our teachers are prepared to be the ones working with your children. And our P6 teachers are very dedicated working with our students. So we will go the extra mile to help your child to learn. So don't, please don't send your child for tuition, all right? There's no need to do so. So I want to end by redefining success, right? What is success? It's not about getting very good results, exam results, winning competitions, getting a lot of awards, but really it's a successful personal life, healthy, meaningful relationships with family and friends. Second, it's a successful school life, improvement and growth, being the best that you can be. And third, it is the good that you leave behind. So we tell our students, how do you want your friends and teachers to remember you? Have you done something positive and meaningful for others? So parents, I want to leave this thought with you uh, about success. This is not something that, that um, I came up with. I heard this during a parenting talk many, many years ago. And I thought it was very wise and I've been sharing it with parents uh, year after year. All right, so thank you very much. Thank you for your kind attention. Now um, I'll hand the time over to Mrs. Lee, our year head, who will share with you more about what to expect in P1 and also on the first day of school. All right, over to you, Mrs. Lee. Good afternoon, parents. Can, I, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay, good. Okay, uh, I'm Mrs. Lee, the year head for P1 and P2. Okay, I'm going to introduce uh, our assistant year head for primary one, and that is a uh, Madam Xiao. Hello, everyone. Okay, Madam Xiao will talk to you in a short while after my uh, short sharing with you. Okay, I'm going to share screen. Just give me a minute. To go. Okay, I hope everybody can see my slides. Okay, so welcome to Zhenghua Primary School for the children in front of your father's or your mother's laptop. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the school. Okay, I am the year head for primary one and two. I'm Mrs. Lee. And for primary one next year, the assistant year head will be Madam Xiao. Now, for the first day of school next year, it will be on 4th of January. It's a Tuesday. As reported in Ministry of Education, only the primary one students will report to school on this day. Sorry, it should be a Tuesday. Okay, uh, this will enable our school to welcome the P1 students and to ensure safe management measures effectively. 
As part of the SMM, one parent or one guardian will be allowed to accompany your child to the school. So for the primary one children, your parents will come with you to the school. So on that day, for parents, we have some programs for you. You will have curriculum briefings by the different subject heads. You will also get a chance to meet up with the form teachers. And during recess, you will have recess bonding time with your children and you can actually teach your child or show your child um, at the different stores and show them how to buy food. And for students, you will be meeting with your form teachers and you will meet your classmates on that day. For week one, to help our P1 students to adjust to the new school environment, the school hour for the week will be shortened. So we are talking about Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So the school hour will be shortened. The exact school hours for this week, we will inform the parents only in mid-December via Parents' Gateway. So for a normal school day, all the children are expected to be seated in the classroom by 7.25 a.m. Okay, our flag raising and singing of the national anthem will be at 7.30 a.m. Recess time will be from 9 to 9.30 a.m. There will be a short snack time at 11 a.m. During dismissal, okay, the school does it this way. We have different dismissal points. Gate 2, Gate 3, lobby for the school bus. And we also have siblings at the red tent and student care centers, we also have designated tents for them to wait for their student care teachers. Dismissal will be dismissal timing will be staggered. So the P1s will usually be the ones who are dismissed first, followed by the other levels. Afterwards, we will show you the photographs of all the different dismissal points. For school attire, you can come to school either in school uniform or PE attire. Okay, PE t-shirts, the color of it, we go according to the classes. Okay, so for P1, for example, one care, if you're in one care or one integrity, your PE attire, the PE shirt should be green in color. One collaboration, one resilience, it will be blue. One excellence and one respect, it should be purple. Harmony will be yellow. Innovation will be red. So the children can come either in school uniform or PE attire. Now, what do you bring to school every day? So every day we expect uh, you to bring your pencil case. You should have at least five sharpened pencils inside. Bring a ruler, bring an eraser and a sharpener. You should have your color pencils with you. You also should have your student handbook to bring to school every day. Now, this student handbook will be given to all the primary one children in January. Okay, try to bring your water bottle, bring extra mask, and bring simple snack. So parents, you may want to pack some simple snack for your child. It can be some biscuits or very simple sandwich, okay, or some fruits. For week one, okay, in week one, because it's the first few days of school, we actually prepared a checklist for you so that you know what to bring um, on different days. Now, this checklist, the school will send to you in mid-December. So this is just uh, one sample for you. So for example, on the first day, Tuesday, brings the stellar handwriting, bring the max practice book, some files or that. So all these detailed items to be brought, we will send the checklist to you in mid-December together with the week one school timing. Okay, these are the mother tongue textbook requirements for the different mother tongue. Please write your child's name and class on all the exercise books, files, other personal belongings. This will enable the school to trace the owners should the items be misplaced and found subsequently. You can also uh, prepare name stickers and put on all these items. 
Now, do not write the subject on the exercise book. So when you prepare the exercise book for your child to bring, you need not write the subject. Just put their name and class because this exercise book will be um, given to the different subject teachers. So they will indicate on the respective exercise book. So you need not write them. Most of these items, once the teachers collect, we will keep them in the classroom. So your child need not bring the text, uh, the exercise books or the workbook uh, inside their bag every day. Okay, this is just uh, the reminder that uh, just now our principal has mentioned that there is no examination for primary one. Okay, no marks given for all the exercises that we are doing. We also do not have remedial lessons for primary one. Okay, how can you uh, help to prepare your child for primary one? So these are some of the examples, some of the things that you can take note. Under relating to others, it will be good if uh, parents who can model the use of friendly and uh, polite phrases, for example, um, you can teach your child um, to introduce themselves. For example, like, hello, my name is so-and-so, and what is your name? And then also tell them, okay, when you talk to someone, you, you want, want to ask for a favor or something, you can say, may I please? Okay, it would be good to develop good habits as well. Guide your child to do the following independently. Dress themselves, pack their bag, use a mask responsibly, and take their temperature using a thermometer. Nurturing positive learning attitudes, practice life skills independently, such as uh, buying food, buying drinks on their own, and asking for permission. Okay, in the home, it would be good to create a conducive learning environment at home. Set up this uh, conducive environment so that your child can learn both at home and in school. Have a dedicated area for learning. It's good to establish a daily routine with your child. With time set aside for reading, schoolwork, rest, family time and play. For communication, we encourage frequent communication. Okay, you can actually make appointment with the teacher through the student's handbook to the school's email address. You can call the school okay, to leave a message or you can actually uh, write to the teachers direct uh, via the teacher's email addresses. The teacher's email address are actually um, written uh, on the website, school website. Okay, I believe uh, most of you are aware of this. So for the Zhenghua Student Care Center in our school, we have YMCA as our student care center. If you have any queries, um, please contact them. Okay, the next one is the school transport arrangement. So I'm sure um, the school has actually sent all this information to you uh, beforehand. Okay, in a short while, Madam Xiao will share with everybody a normal daily routine in class in the canteen. And then this uh, is regards to the safety measurement in the school. Hello, good afternoon. Can you hear me? All right, good afternoon, parents. I'm Madam Xiao here. I will be working, I will be walking the journey with you as your child embarks on this exciting phase of her or his life. Okay, I'll share with you the class routines. Right, when the child first comes to school, uh, she will do a wipe down. Okay, these are examples of children doing the wipe down. Then she will take her temperature and then they will clean the thermometer and they will record the temperature in her handbook and washing hands. We are teaching your child self-responsibility and get ready for lessons. 
Punctuality is very important. Students are encouraged to be seated in the hall by 7.25 a.m. There will be pre-assembly sharing and announcement starting from 7.10 a.m. Please ensure that your child come in during this time because they'll be sharing by the school leaders and even their peers. They are actually learning beyond academics. Every student needs a storybook. Read. Bring a storybook to school every day. Pick books that are at the right level and spend quality time reading with your child. Okay, the next sec uh, section will be safety measurement in the canteen. Right? The child will look for class register number paste on the canteen benches and table, sorry. So there'll be crosses and the student will not be seated there. She'll buy healthy food. Or you can even pack food. And clear the table after use. Same here, we are teaching them self-responsibility. Wipe down after food. Responsible for self and others. Wash hands after the wipe down. Recess and snack time. P1 recess is from 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Our school canteen is participating in the healthy meals in the school program. P1 snack time is 11 a.m. daily. Do pack healthy snacks for your child. Canteen, there are two drink stores, cold and hot, two hala stores, store six and seven. Pocket money of $2 should be sufficient, or you can even pack food for them. Dismissal points, do not change the pickup dismissal point to avoid anxiety for your child. Please be punctual. All right, these are the dismissal gates. Gate two. Gate 3, which is nearest to our hall, and they have to walk up the flight of stairs. Please ensure that they pack their bags so that it's not too heavy for them. School lobby, where they bought the bus. All right. Now, this is the red tent. If your child has a sibling in our school, this is the place that they should wait for their brother or sisters. And this red tent is next to our school canteen. This is the white tent, which is nearest to the gate two. This is for the external student care center. Right, name tag. Uh, this will be given to you um, when school reopened the first day. Please write down the gate number, mode of dismissal on your child, temporary name tag so that the teacher will know which gate to take him or her. Ensure that your child wear his or her name tag at all times. Name tag will be distributed, yes, on the first day. All right, and this will be given to you as well. This is a very important note because the child may not know your phone number. So your emergency contact number is very important. If you can give us a few of your emergency contact number so that, you know, we will uh, avoid anxiety of your child. All right. Now, we are going on for a virtual tour of our school. Sit back and relax. Good morning, parents. Welcome to Zhonghua Primary School. We are from Primary 6. I am Chloe. I am Ariel. And I'm Ocean. We are show guides to our beautiful school compound today. We are so excited to show you all the places in our beautiful school compound which made our school life so colorful. So come, come and follow us. us. This is our general office. There are friendly staff to help us with administrative matters. There is a sick bay in the general office. And if we are sick, <coughs> The office staff will help us contact our parents. Well, we, we are, are here, here. Just, just press the bell and wait. 
Hello, my name is Melissa and Madam Yati. Good morning, student. How may I help you? Outside the general office school lobby, we alight aboard the school bus here. Dear parents, if you are sending your child or children by cars, please note that move on quickly and drop them off here to avoid congestion. Do note that no vehicles are allowed in the school premises during big dismissal time. Oh yes, please also drive slowly and be more patient while driving around the school vicinity. Now, we shall move on to our school gate too. Parents can drop off or pick up their children here. For primary one students, teachers will bring them to the void deck for dismissal. This is our security post. All parents visiting the school must report to the security post to get a visitor pass. Please display the visitor pass prominently so that we know you're officially allowed to visit the school. Remember, security and safety are very important. Now we are at gate 3. Please take note that gate 3 is open during specific hours. Remember to report to the security post to get the visitor pass. Oh, I have to say this, you must be punctual for school every day. Don't be late! Mmm, I can smell the aroma from my favourite food stall. This is our canteen. Here, they serve the healthy meal plate. Food that is cooked with less oil, salt and sugar. It also comes with a serving of fruit. There are two halal stalls, rice, noodles and drink stalls. You have to queue up orderly to buy food at all the time. After eating, we must return the used plates to the utensil return station. This is to teach us the value of responsibility. We must keep the school clean. This is our favourite place, the school bookshop. We love to come here to buy stationery and books. On both orientation days, the school bookshop will be open from 11 to 12 p.m. Thanks to the bookshop is the dental clinic. Our friendly dental therapist, Madam Ya, will schedule a checkup to check the oral health of your child. Right now, we have the red waves. The red waves is where your child can wait for their siblings during the same times and go home together. Hey, let's go to my favorite place in the school. Where is it? Haha, <laughs> a place where I can bury my nose under the books. Oh, the library! Right now, we are at our lovely library. Please take note of the library opening hours shown here. Every student is encouraged to bring and read a book uh, during silent reading in the hall every morning. Now let's go into the library and meet our librarian. Hello, Madam Chia. Hello. The last place on the ground floor is the orange booth. This is the place where students can gather and with their student care teachers to bring them to the student care centers. This is our multi-purpose school hall. This is the place we all assemble in the morning for assembly and do our silent reading. I like to come to school by 7 10 a.m. There are pre-assembly segments such as value talks and talking points presented by our schoolmates. The school also shows us current world news. Yes, I remember they show us the typhoon in Hong Kong and the hurricane from USA. I really empathize with the people who suffered from these natural disasters. Aren't we lucky to be living in Singapore? I like love tunes when we learn and sing new songs as a school. La la la. We are on the third floor and this is our innovation lab where all the computer lessons take place. And I love computer lessons. We are in the digital music lab where we have our music lessons. We learn to sing different songs and play different music instruments. Let me introduce to you our studio ports. This is where our signature dance lessons take place. We learn traditional and future dance steps too. This is our 
This is our Van Gogh studio, where we let our creative juices run free. Look at the beautiful art pieces. I really love the exposure that music and art lessons give me. It makes me a whole person. Hi, hi. I think we have missed out the most important area that the parents are eager to look at. Hmm, what is it? Primary one parents. Of course, the primary one classrooms. The primary one classes are located in the first and second floor of the Joy Floor. They are well decorated and inviting for our juniors. Hello everyone, uh, I'm, I'm Anu, I'm the school counsellor and it's really good to see so many faces there. So I just say hi to all the children. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the next 10 minutes or so to very quickly go through the transitions that your children will go through um, while they're coming into uh, primary one and to show you some support that parents uh, you can take on in order to support your children. Okay, I'll start uh, sharing the screen now. Okay, right. in, in Chenghua Primary School, just like any other school, it's always a three-way partnership between the school, the student, and the parents. The main focus is to build a caring home and a school environment so that we can nurture the social and emotional skills of your child. And what I'm going to share with you right now, it's called the SAFE TIPS, and it it's basically an acronym for saying support, affirm, familiarize, and empathize. And these are little tips that you can use in order to support your child. Support. By saying support, uh, what we're talking about is committing some time every day to talk with your child. Commit some time uh, during weekends to play games. I do know that we are busy. There may be some of us who are single parents. Uh, and we have some busy parents out there, all of us are, but do make attempt to spend some time with your child, even as uh, they're coming to school so that they have someone to talk to. Support also talks about visiting places or taking part uh, in events that both of you enjoy. Uh, despite COVID, I, I do see a lot of our parents still doing things with their children. So we also encourage your child to make new friends and role play with your child. You can do role plays by, by pretending to be a friend and, and how they can talk and all of that. So, so those are things that you can actually do in order to support your child. Just want to share some quotes. I'll share some quotes along the way so, uh, so that it just kind of reinforces what we're talking about. So encourage and support your kids because children are apt to live with what you believe of them, your belief of your child is an integral part in, the, in their developmental years. Next is basically to encourage your child, it's affirmation. Encourage your child when he or she makes observations, say that's interesting and ask why she said that. How come, tell me more. I know in our busyness, we may be tired, but even setting aside 15 minutes, that in itself is quality time. It's a start, it's, it's minimal, uh, but that would ensure that there's also bonding taking place. It is very, very important. Okay, and when your child comes up and says, you know, mommy, daddy, I made another friend in class, affirm your child and say, well done. Because by saying that, you're also building um, boldness in your child, all right? And you know, you have raised your hand to ask the teacher a question, ask for permission, fantastic. I like your bravery. Remember your voice, your affirmations, shape your child. Affirming words from moms and dads are like light switches. Speak a word of affirmation at the right moment in your child's life. And it's like lighting up a whole room full of possibilities. And at this note, I have to say that if we do the opposite, when we do not speak affirmation, when we speak discouraging words, those are things that um, 
end up in our children's lives. And uh, they become what we call schemas that affect them even as they grow. Familiarize, find out, what, uh, find out about what primary school have in store for students for these days and prepare your child for what to expect for the first three days. I placed first three days as just a ballpark figure, but go in for the first week or so, whatever is uh, according to your child's ability, that is so, so important. Every child is different. And you know, sometimes uh, we compare, oh, your friend can do that, why can't you do that? But we know our children the best. So do support them in accordance to their own uh, gauge. Okay, it's what you do for your children, but what you have taught them to do for themselves that will make them successful human beings. So once again, I would have to say, it has to be age appropriate. Be there for your children, walk with them, uh, send them to school. Sometimes when I stay back and, and I look at parents, you know, when they come in with their children, giving them a kiss before they're sending them up, it is so beautiful to watch. And you find that those children are walking with such boldness, stepping into the school, uh, school stairs. So that's really good, good to see. Next is to practice some routines with your child. Plan daily routines. Teach your child new habits like packing his, his or her bag, put in the stationery that are necessary. And the next thing is to teach uh, your child how to describe feelings. Glad, sad, mad, scared, anxious. These are things that even in the counseling department, these are things that we teach the children. Uh, why this important is so that the child is able to acknowledge the feelings that they have, they're able to express, they're able to articulate. That is so important. Or not what they would always say, I'm angry, but behind anger, there are so many other emotions. Okay, and sometimes they feel anxious. Some of them may even refuse to let you go. Uh, and at that time, just encourage them and say, you know, mommy's always here for you, daddy's always here for you, uh, you will enjoy your day in school. So understand your child needs, start bedtime early. And on this junction, I have to say with, with the media coming in, with social media, many of our children, if you find it across Singapore, is busy using the mobile phones, busy at night using that, you know, that becomes the nanny, that becomes the father and the mother. So if we can start off young, telling the children no mobile phone and there's more conversation taking place rather than interaction with the mobile phone, that would be good. Start bedtime early so that children get sufficient sleep. And you can also talk fondly about your memories, the old school days, what you did in primary one, so that they have a reference point. Okay, you can ask them about their feelings, how they feel in school. You can also share about how you felt in school and discuss together if they have any worry. And when they do come up to you and share about a worry or concern, give them your listening ear. Uh, it makes a lot of difference. Uh, the important thing is, is, is beyond bringing a child into the world, it's also holding their hands and walking through and journeying with them because that's what they will remember. All right. So when parents teach their children empathy and help them to cope with negative feelings such as anger, sadness, and fear, what it does is that you are building bridges of loyalty and affection. Quick tips, listen without interrupting. When they're talking, don't say quickly, quickly say, huh? You know, don't say that, listen to them, nod your head, ask questions to show your interest and affirmation and clarify. You know, sometimes we jump into conclusion. So when you do have some questions, ask them, all right? And be involved. The process of parenting can be rewarding, enjoyable, frustrating, and teachable, but we all learn through trial and error. I have three daughters, and uh, I've learned through trial and error. Uh, we're not perfect parents, but we can be good enough parents, okay? So every parent has to develop their own goals and approach to discipline. There's a couple of things, a few more slides to go, and some important responsibilities that affect that health and happiness of parents and children include the following. It's so important, child guidance, you have legal and moral responsibilities, you have financial responsibilities, you have health and safety responsibilities, social and emotional development, that's the emotional development of your child, cognitive development refers to uh, their learning, their thinking and all of that. So in terms of child guidance, the parents should always use age appropriate Ensure that your children are not doing things beyond their age. There are cases where parents make the children handle things that are beyond their age. So it is so important, age appropriate, according to the abilities, according to the situation. The legal and moral responsibilities that you do have as parents is the economic security, education, 
respect for others, teaching them understanding of rules and decision-making skills. Uh, and on this junction, I would have to say that when you do face any issues at all, please feel free to come to the school, do share with us because the school is here to support you. You know, we, we're like a lighthouse. We are here to support you and to hold you through. Social emotional development of a child is whereby you, you're teaching them affection and you do that as well. The children basically do not listen to what you say. They listen to what you do, all right? So nurturing, positive self-esteem, self-concept, and self-image. When a child starts to look at himself or herself uh, with positive uh, self-image, it makes a whole lot of difference, even in their learning. Health and safety responsibilities that we as parents have is, of course, food, water, clothing, shelter, safety, protection, medical check. Once again, please know that we are here to support you. We are here to refer any assistance that you require, you are not alone. Okay, so back to cognitive development is whereby as parents, we are looking at the intelligence and mental ability of our children, provide educational opportunities, teach them thinking skills and learning activities. It may be a mouthful, it's like a lot of words, but basically it's basically guiding them, being there for them, conversing with them. I, this slide I found it, it is pretty blurry, I couldn't find a better slide, but I, I just want to read this out very quickly for you, right? The voice that you speak to your children becomes their inner voice. So I'm just going to read this out, okay? You can do it. You are the best. You are a star. That's my champ. Awesome. Good job. Works wonders. When you say, idiot, shut up, go away. You're such a mess. That too becomes a reality. It becomes a, 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 a philosophy that they start to, to, to be uh, living in. It becomes their mantra. So... It's, it's so important to know what we speak to our children. So just a very quick note that we work together as a school, uh, as stakeholders holding you through this journey with your child. The young children come to see themselves through the eyes of their parents. The way you speak to him or her is the way they speak to herself. I want to show a video, but I will not be doing that. But I wanted to share you something. You know, um, you know Sometimes as parents, and, and the school of thought is that, you know, the counseling department or the counselor is, is not a person you should see, you know, but we've moved on from there. Uh, we are here to support you. And I got some excerpts from some of our P6s who were here from P1. They've allowed me to share with you uh, what they have to say. I've got a lot, but I'm just going to share six with you. Okay, and I'm going to read it through. All right. One student said it helped me to focus in class, it also helped me to learn more ways to relieve stress and anxiety. That's the help okay, we counselors do. I guess it also helped me to learn about myself in a way. It also helped me to see through some of my friends and help them with their feelings and thoughts. Another student said it has helped me to understand my mistakes and what I should do about them. It made me feel a lot better as I had someone to talk to, someone to listen to my problems and give me a suggestion, and it made me feel happy. It helped me to see myself in a different way and to understand how my actions have affected me. It's a safe space to me to share personal things about myself and also to get some useful advice for me to help improve. The last three, the counseling program has made me say no to bad company. It helped me a lot on focusing on my studies and made me feel better about myself. The counseling program made me feel better. The counseling program helped me to be more relaxed, made me feel better, made me think about my future, helped me feel calm, uh, with my studies, taught me to make a calendar for my studies and to plan my studies better. And uh, with that, I think I, I would come to the end of my presentation. And just to say that we are here to support you, to walk you, you through and journey with you. We are here to support you. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam Anu. I just want to emphasize to, um, that the counseling program is part of our school program. And in our school, our students understand that they can drop in to talk, to have a chat with the counselors. Um, if they, they just need someone to talk to. So let's be very clear. It doesn't mean that you only see the counselor when there's something wrong with you. So we have moved away from that. And because we care about our students' mental health and well-being, we do want to provide opportunities for students to talk about um, their emotions and how they're feeling, right? So at the first level, 
our form teachers will speak to them. There'll be one-to-one -one conversations with the form teachers. And our form teachers are on the lookout for students who may be, you know, not quite themselves, right? Um, in our school, our counsellor's uh, room is actually sited in the canteen area. They have their, their, their room there and students do drop by and, you know, chat with the counsellors, their stuffed toys, their games. And so they just go in to chit chat, right? You, there doesn't have to be anything wrong with the child to drop in to, to talk to the counsellor. And if sometimes the, 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 the child just wants a, a listening ear, okay? So the counsellors are there to provide support, all right? The next thing would be that um, sometimes your child may be experiencing, um, you know, some emotional um, difficulties and need support. Something could be happening at home that uh, affects the child. And so we are here to support. And so this is where, you know, our counsellors are very well trained and here to, to have sessions to talk through with your child and help your child process the emotions and help your child have coping strategies, all right? So that's very important. Now, um, do you have, there are some questions regarding school uniform. Um, I would just like to share that for the school uniform, it's okay if you have bought a few sets so your child can alternate between wearing the school uniform and wearing the PE attire. Now, in, in a normal year when there was no COVID-19, actually the children should be in school uniform each day unless they have PE. But because of COVID-19 the, and the, the children need to wear masks, so that's why we allowed students to wear the PE attire on most days or every day if they felt more comfortable and cool in it. But if you have um, bought the school uniform, it's okay maybe once a week, twice a week that your child can wear the school uniform and have the experience of wearing it, all right? Um, maybe on a day when it is cooler, a bit more rainy, your child can wear the school uniform. So that's all right. And later on, one day we will um, get out of the COVID-19 crisis and we will go back to wearing school uniform, all right? Because really the children are more presentable uh, in school uniform. It's just that we understand that uh, it's not so comfortable, it's hotter when they're wearing the masks. Okay, so I hope that explains um, the bit about the P attire or the school uniform. Okay, any questions from parents? We have tried to answer as many questions as we can in the chat, but if we happen to miss any question, um, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. When do I know my class? Oh, when will you know your class? Actually, we um, they've already assigned you to your classes. I see. Are you Kevin's sibling? Okay. Um, you mean the girl? Yes. Yeah, that's my sister. She's going to school next year. Right. So, Miss Carol Poir, uh, would you like to answer the uh, question? Uh, hi, Paris. We have already informed your child's class via email. So do let us know if you did not receive the information so we'll contact you directly. You want to direct message to me? Hello. Hi. 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 Yes. So children, you'll get to meet your teachers next year on the first day of school. All right? Okay. All okay. right. They are all very nice and caring teachers. Don't worry. <laughs> and we'll take you on a tour of the school because we have upgraded the school. We have a lot of exciting new facilities. We'll take you and your parents on a tour on the first day. All right? Any other questions? Hi. Yes. Yeah, we, have, uh, we have mentioned about the waiting point for external childcare centre, but there's nothing mentioned about the internal childcare centre. Can you talk something about that? 
house arrangement after class, going to the internal child care center. Many questions Hi, you are mentioning about um, internal school SEC, right? Yes, the YMCA okay, SEC. Yes. Okay, our SEC staff will actually go to each and every P1 classroom to pick up your students and take them to their classrooms. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So the YMCA SEC, I put this in the chat just in case you missed it. The YMCA SEC will be okay. organizing a briefing for the parents in the keep you informed by the end of November. Yes. Now, what are you doing? Okay, Emma Shazia, do you have a question? If not, can you please mute yourself? Thank you. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. I, I do have a question. Um, is it compulsory that uh, to use the tongue thermometer rather than the forehead thermometer that you say that they need to do on a daily basis? It might be a challenge to them you say, to roll the thermometer under their tongue and hold that for half a minute and things like that. So it, it's okay um, if you want to give your child a forehead thermometer, is that right? You, you, yeah, that's okay. But we need to calibrate it because the forehead thermometer is not as sensitive as the oral thermometer. So can you do it at home and calibrate it? That means um, the, you take with the, the forehead thermometer and you get your child to do it with the oral digital thermometer at home and look at the difference in temperature because the forehead thermometer tends to be lower, okay? So that you know what is the difference and then next year you can let the form teacher know. Okay, we'll do, we'll do. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Hi, can I can I ask, is there any restriction to the uh, mask uh, colors or designs in the class? Mask, uh, any color and design is okay, but you need to wear surgical masks or if you wear um if you don't wear surgical masks, let's say reusable masks, they need to be uh, of the same filtration capacity. So at least two, uh, three layers, you know, those, those issued by the Masik Foundation or have at least 95% uh, efficiency. Okay, so for the masks, they can wear any kind of mask, it's any, any design. To us, it's not about the design, it's about how good it, it, it is in protecting your child. Okay, surgical masks or those with 95% filtration capacity. All right, thank you. Okay, so we have one more question. Um, I saw from the video, right, in school uniform, it, it, it actually comes with the tie. Is it? Oh, that's uh, for prefix. The tie is for prefix. So it's not necessary yes. for. Yes, it's the... not for the. Yeah, that's right. Ah, okay. okay, thanks. That's all. Uh, hi, I have a question. Uh, yes. You mentioned that they need to bring a storybook every day to read, right? So yes. which time of the day will they read the storybook? In the morning before school starts. Oh, so at the 7.10 when they come in? Yes, that's right. 7.10 okay. onwards. I mean, they, they are not late as long as they come to school before 7.30. They're in okay, class. How? Sometimes when they finish their work early, they can also take out their storybooks to read. And every classroom has a reading corner. So they can also pick up books from the, the, the reading corner to read because we want to encourage all our children to love reading. All right, then they will really uh, build a strong foundation in English or the mother tongue language. Okay, um, I have a, um, sorry, I have a question. Is the storybook we need to bring by our own or um, can get it from the school? It's best if they bring one from, from home, okay? And then in the future, they can also... Um, Borrow. Okay, let's say you forget to bring one from ho from home. They can also pick one out from the reading corner. Okay, can thank. Hi, sorry, I have another question. Sure. So they mentioned in the letter that the like the child is placed in primary one integrity. So primary one integrity is the uniform color as well as their class, is it? Integrity it will be the PE. Yes, the the. It will de the class will determine the PE attire color. I see. Yeah. So, so meaning that the green house, the integrity people will be in one class. All yes. In one yes. Integrity. They will all wear the same colored T-shirt. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Hi, can I just find out something? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, so uh, my because my question is not answered in the chat, so just because I'm going to buy school bag for her, can I buy those real, real ones that she can you can pull along? Or because I understand some school, they don't allow the children to buy the wheel, you know, those school bags with wheels. Right. Uh, it, it's okay, but we, we just want to make sure that um, it's, uh, you, the, the school bag is not too heavy. Okay. So, some, yeah, you see, when you have a school bag with wheels, people tend to put a lot more things into it. And then uh, some classes may be on the second floor. And your child still has to go up the stairs with the bag, right? So we just want to make sure that it's safe uh, for your child. So um, a bag with wheels is okay, but please don't put too many things in it. All right, make, make sure that the, the, you only pack what is needed for the day. And actually a lot of the workbooks uh, can be kept in class. The, the teachers will be collecting workbooks. All right? Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. That's all. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a safety issue. Just as a safety thing. All right? Okay, okay. Can, thank you. Uh, right. So there's a question regarding school shoes. School shoes should generally be white. Yeah. Um, if let's say there is a green line, a green band, you know, some, some shoes have a green line, I don't think we will be too fussy about it. Lah. Okay, if you, have, or you already have white shoes, happens to a green line, it's okay. All right, we're not going to make you go and buy new and another totally white pair of shoes, but it should generally be white. Okay, the soles can be of a different color. Sometimes they have a line, you know, um, a thin line that's of a slightly different color. I think that's okay. All right. Hi, uh, yeah. actually, uh, I, hi. Uh, actually, I just joined the group, uh, so I missed this uh, conference. So would I have any uh, chance to know what's happening after this? We, uh, we have recorded yeah we have recorded this briefing session and so we will upload uh we will upload them and then the briefing slides as well okay on okay. our school website okay can thank you um sorry um i have a question just now you mentioned that uh, some classes is at at the level two right so may i know which classes are um located at the level two it's not confirmed yet we're in the process of working it out Okay, you will know on the on the uh on the first day of school. It's okay. We will uh, right. show you the directions. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Hi. Uh, I got uh I think three questions. Hi. Yes. Okay. Uh, first question. First, the uh, the first day of uh, school on fourth January. Parent is there the whole day, or is that a a part of the time thing? You can be there from. It will be from 8 to 12. Okay, the okay. time will be confirmed. It, it will be a slightly shorter day, okay, to ease the child in. So that they don't have to wake up so early and, and it won't be such a long time. So, uh, generally about 8 to 12. Okay. You can stay the whole day if you want because we will be having curriculum briefings for you, taking you around the school. You get to see your child during recess. You get to go into class to see the teacher. Okay. So you can take leave if you... Uh, you know, if you can try to take leave, half a day leave, um, for the morning of the fourth of January. Okay. One parent. Uh, then the but we only check the school bus, right? Because it's eight to four thing. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, eight to twelve thing. Yeah, that's right. So, um, the child does not need to be well. If you want the child to experience being on the school bus, you can, or or it could be that your child can go on the school bus from Wednesday onwards. Okay, Tuesday, you can bring your child in directly. Um, sorry, excuse me. We can only um, be the school with the children for one day? or One day, one, one day. day, that's right. Yeah, MOE has only designated one day. Okay. Because uh, on, the, on the 5th of January, the P2 to 6 students come back to school. So we uh, generally, um, the safe management approach in Singapore is that we don't want to expose our students to a lot of people. Okay? So that's why 4th of January is just one child, one parent. No other, no other students are in school that, that day. So it's only one day. Okay. Um, the second question actually I had was regarding the optional items on the book list. Is it recommended to buy them or it really depends on 
you know, how we want to utilize it. Uh, Mrs. Lee? Yes. Madam Xiao? Optional items on the book list? If they're optional, they should be optional. Yes, but it should be optional. Yes. Okay, uh, sorry, the last question actually is regarding uh, gadgets, okay? Uh, I, I, I think I've heard certain schools don't allow it. Certain schools said you can only have a simple phone. What is the school policy on it? Like if let's say we get her a watch with, you know, with a call function or something. Uh, that's, that's okay. Um, but we have a school handphone policy where it must be switched off, okay. uh, except um, before and after school. And they can only use it you know, at, uh, at designated places, let's say at the gate or the foyer to, to, to call parents. But the phone needs to be off at all other times. But they can bring it to school because we know that sometimes after school, especially older kids, they may need to use it. But we don't have uh, restrictions on the kind of phone or the kind of watch. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I have another question. Yes. How about the buddy thing? Uh, how long will the buddy be with them, the P6 buddy for recess and all that? For how long will the buddy accompany them? Mrs. Lee, I think generally for at least one week or two, but they yeah. will take a look at how independent the children are. Maybe Mrs. Lee and Madam Xiao, do you want yes. to... Uh, and we will arrange for the first three days. Usually by then, they are quite independent. So the first week... Monday, uh, sorry, Tuesday, you'll be with your child. Then the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there will be buddy. So don't worry, parents. All right. So the following week after, they will be on their own already. Lah. Yes. Okay. Yes. All, right. all right. Thank From you. From experience, they, are, they will be all right. Oh, okay. <laughs> good, good to know. Thank you. They adapt very quickly and they adapt well. Okay. So is teacher just still talking? Can you go outside and go home? Okay. I don't want to let to school, but what did just what did just go us? <laughs> if you're late to school, right? Okay, if you're P one, I think the teachers will be very very patient and nice, and will just tell you uh, next time, please uh, come to school on time. Okay. All right, we will be understanding, but uh, you need to try to, to wake up earlier and come to school on time. Uh, parents, we realize that for late coming, right, sometimes it is because of the parents. When parents uh, take the children to school, the parents are late. That's why the child is late. So if you don't want your child to be anxious, please, you know, make, make an effort to help your child come into school early. Okay, so I want to assure the P1 uh, students, right, Mrs. Lee and Madam Xiao will, will affirm this that you know you will your your teachers will not be very fierce, uh, they'll be very very understanding, but we hope that you will learn to be more and more responsible and come to school on time. Okay? All right. Thank you. Ah, so a student said that. Uh, he or she is scared to go to primary school because uh, cannot, he cannot eat very fast. Okay, don't worry, you have time. Okay. Um, most students eat quite quickly. You have half an hour for recess. And actually, the first, the first week of school, we will give you more time for recess. Right, Mrs. Lee and Madam Xiao? First week of school, the recess will be a bit longer to help you get used to it. Okay, so we will, we will ease you in. And you have half an hour, but during the first week, you you have a bit more time. So don't worry. And then gradually, you'll get used to it. If you are scared, you please tell your teacher. Okay. Hi, you can drive in and drop the student, right? Sorry, we can't. We could you repeat? Okay, can we drive in to drop off the student in the morning? Yes, you can drive in to drop off the student. Okay, and, uh, next, I want to check about the dismissal because if uh he is normally uh student care, 
So if that day we want to uh do not want to let him go to student care, where should he meet us at the dismissal uh, area? You still need at the at the right ten for the external student care or where he should meet us on that day. Oh yeah. Mrs. Lee, uh Madam Sia, would you like to take that question? Okay, your child is, is in the external or internal? Uh, external student care. Usually, okay. la, normally, yeah. but okay. uh, for like sometimes we want to pick him up by ourselves, uh, not the student care where he should wait. Yes. Is it still at the white, white tent? Or? No, no. That means if you want to pick up your the child yourself, you have to let the child know which gate and then inform the teacher. The teacher will bring him to the respective gate. How do I inform the teacher on that day? Or? Uh, you can write, uh, yeah, student handbook is very important. Write on the student handbook. Ask the child to show to the teacher. For me, so the, is, the night uh, before, I should write the the yes. the time, uh, the place that I okay. Can yes. if uh, I, so uh, that, that is a means of communication between teacher and uh, parents. Okay, one of okay. the communication. Okay, so the night before, I just say, uh, to today, uh, my son will uh, go to gate. Uh, the okay. external uh student care teacher will not bring that bring him to the student care. Yes. Okay, so if and my son got some appointment on the weekdays, like school timing, how do you uh, like handle this time? Is it MC or how? Or oh, we should okay. postpone the appointment time to after school that night, noon time or what? Uh, it will be good if you can postpone the timing, but un unless it's emergency, uh, of course, uh, you know, when they, they can give us an MC cheat or inform the teacher, we are understanding. Appointment, uh. okay. Okay. Yes. yes, and and we do understand sometimes it's very hard to change the appointment. So if that's the case, let the teacher know in advance and it will be uh, absent with a valid reason. Okay. Um, okay, there, there are some questions in the chat that I'll answer orally. Um, how when will CCA begin in P3? In P2, though, there will be some enrichment uh, lessons um, for music, art, and dance which uh, children who show interest in these areas will be invited to experience, but in uh, CCA will begin in P3. Then uh, you ask how many students in one class, it's 30 students in one class, all right? Uh, and the latest time they should reach school, uh, they should be in class before 7.30, because at 7.30, we will sing the national anthem and say the pledge, all right? But we encourage them to come to school by 7.20 because uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we usually have a pre-assembly program and a lot of very interesting talks shared by either students, teachers uh, or school leaders. So we strongly encourage them to come earlier so that they can also not rush, not feel rushed, take the temperature, wipe down and enjoy the, the talks. Okay. Um, and we see a very heartwarming um, shout out here. So there's a parent here who was Mrs. Lee Bung Kwang's uh, student. So now your child is coming in to P1. <laughs> so it's wonderful. Your student, yeah. student, yeah. Your student's student. Hi, Mrs. Child. Ah, yeah. yeah. I'm Pei Yen. I was from your class uh, for Justice in 1999. And my dad remembered you to this day. Oh, yeah, so because you um, use the Chinese idiom on me. So that's why he remember it very, very fondly till today. Yeah, so I'm really happy to be back um, with Chen Hua. Yeah, it's my pride. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Any more questions? The timetable, the timetable, you will, um, the class timetable, don't, don't, don't worry, okay? You, we will give the timetable on the first day of school. All right, or, 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 or during the first week of school rather, there's no need, don't, don't, don't worry about the timetable. Just pack things according to what uh, Mrs. Lee and Madam Xiao shared and we will send a reminder through Parents Gateway. All right, thank you.
Okay. If there are no further uh, questions, are there any more questions? Last call. Uh, yeah, sorry, last question. So on the second day, uh, parents are not allowed to go in. So if we drop the student at the car lobby area, will there anyone pick them up or how they go to their class? There will be P6 students who will meet them and walk with them to the classroom. Okay. Yes. Uh, walk, yeah, okay. Mm. Uh, can I check for the first day, can they wear PE t-shirt or they yes. have to wear uniform? PE t-shirt is fine on the first day. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Hi, I want to check, uh, is there any home-based learning or any uh, yeah, home-based learning uh, schedule? The home, we will, okay, there is two kinds of home-based learning. Right. One would be, for example, this year during the PSLE marking exercise, the PSLE oral um, or PSLE listening comprehension when the students don't come to school. Right. And so uh, there will be home based learning assignments for the students. Most of these will be through hard copy because these for the P1 students. All right. Older students will access the student learning space, which is an online learning platform. Uh, there's also a national home-based learning when MOE declares it because of the COVID situation. So this will really depend on the COVID situation and we will uh, inform parents in advance and we have a system uh, where the home-based learning assignments are sent to parents through Parents Gateway. All right, so don't worry about this. So I would say currently there is no home-based learning schedule in Term 1 and 2. All right. Term one and two. No home based learning scheduled by our school in term one and two. Term three and four, there will be because of the PSLE exam dates where the students don't come to school except P6 students. Uh, hello, madam. I just want to tell because my son has well done. Is he if the talk, uh, teacher will talk a little louder or a little is called also he like don't want to go to school. He very scared. And then he say I don't want to go to school. So this is the thing I just wanted to ask. Uh, how? Yeah. So don't worry. <laughs> um, can you please tell your child's form teacher? Okay. Okay. All okay. right. Tell your child's form teacher about this mm. and then they will take note. And then he will be a bit nervous. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay, tell your, your, your child's form teacher. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah. So if you have no questions, you can mm -hmm. leave. All okay. right. Yeah, so thank exactly you. what time do students have to be in school? As long as you're in your class before 7.30, you say, are not late. Uh, but we say 1 o'clock or 7.25? 7. Before 7.30. Before 7.30. Okay. But we strongly encourage them to come earlier to listen to the assembly talk, pre-assembly talks. Okay, so it must be 7 o'clock. Huh? Can I check, uh, if both parents is essential worker uh, for the home-based learning, uh, how can the school help us? Right, so during the uh, MOE declared home-based learning, you know, uh, for example, in May this year, Right, and also in September this year, if both parents are essential workers, you let us know. We will usually send an email for you to uh, send a, a, a parents' gateway message and a, and a form SG for you to submit your details and your child can do home-based learning in school. So we have teachers to supervise the home-based learning and take care of them. So don't worry. Okay, thank you. Hey, sorry, I, I currently don't have a printer at home. Will there be any need for a printer for the uh, homework and stuff? Uh, you generally should not need a print printer because uh, if there's home-based learning, we will give the students the hard copies beforehand to use at home. All right? And uh, if for a reason your child has to be on a home recovery program at home, uh, or for, to stay at home for some reason, we can always print out the materials and you can come and collect it from the office. So, so no worries. Okay, uh, then is there any like preparation or expectations we should be making for the kids or anything else? No, you don't need. The, the best way to prepare your child for P1 is emotional preparation. Okay. So in terms of learning, don't worry about it. The main thing is just continue reading with your child, you know, 
get your child to be interested in learning, in, in, in being curious, asking questions. And that's that's the that's it. No need to prepare. Okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, Mrs. Lok, sorry, just a question. Yes. Okay, because my child will be attending the uh, external vendor for student care. Yes. I kind of uh, need to clarify because he needs to take the transport, uh, the school transport to be sent to the SEC. Yes. So during this missile, will he be with the external vendor group or will he be in the school bus group? So he will be in a school, he should be in a school bus group, right? Because the arrangement is that school bus will drop him off at the student care because we do have some students like that. All right. School bus drops off. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. If there are no further questions, we can end this session.